All right, good evening. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're always glad to see you guys here um, at these Saturday night uh, praise nights. It's always an awesome time for me, um, and I hope it blesses you uh, just as much. Um, so tonight I wanted to start off by reading uh, from Genesis, um, and I want us to kind of get in the mindset of God being faithful to us and, and God being enough for us. Uh, and I want to read part of his promise to Abraham. Um, Genesis 17, verse 4. He says, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful. I will make you in the nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and your offspring after you the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. I want us to remember tonight that the God who made those promises to Abraham um, is the same God who's, who's later faithful to Isaac and Jacob um, and Joseph and David, and he's the same God today that's faithful to us. As we go into worship tonight, I want to invite uh, I want to invite you all to stand with us. But as always, you're welcome to stand, sit, um, whatever feels comfortable comfortable to you. So let's all stand up. Uh, let's enter into this time of worship. Uh, we're going to sing "Who You Say I Am." I was like 
the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set free, oh Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan? A son and daughter, the King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave 
conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy of oh, this is amazing grace. This is a family love that you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life that I would be set free. Oh Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Chance rise. 
here tonight to sing praises to our Lord and Savior. We really do have 10,000 reasons to praise Him tonight, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I've just, lately I've been praying more than ever about you folks, about this church, and where we're going in life and what we're doing and what we're focused on and how we can be more connected to Him. And ironically enough, that was the theme at um, camp this week, this last weekend, connectedness. And that's what I want to talk a little bit about tonight, about how we need Him, about our connectedness to Him and what keeps us from that. As I speak for the next few minutes, I want you to seriously reflect on your life right now, where you're at, where your walk with Jesus is. 
Maybe you've known him all your life. Maybe you've, you're just now getting to know him. Maybe there's some things that are keeping you from being connected to him. Maybe there's some sin you're dealing with in your life. Maybe there's some struggles that, you've been, that you're dealing with in your life. Whatever it is, I want, you to, I want you to really think about what that means for your relationship with Jesus tonight over the next few minutes. <clears throat> Maybe fear or shame has been controlling your life. Maybe it's something you did in the past that you can't let go of. Maybe it's somebody at school, kids. Maybe it's your brothers and sisters that you just can't stop being frustrated with. Right? Those things keep us from our Lord and Savior. Jesus um, talked about us being unified in Him. Being unified in Christ. Being together in Him. Being one spirit, one body, one mind. Paul talked about that in 1 Corinthians. That's so hard to do sometimes, isn't it? There's so many things that distract us, that pull us away, that keep us from being who God wants us to be, that keeps us from living the life that God intends for us to live. We've been separated from our God you know, he, he, would, he wanted to be with us intimately from the beginning. And we said, no, we're going to do it our way. We're going to sin and choose our way. And we've been separated with him from him ever since. Trying to feel connected to him. Trying to get back to our God. Trying to get back to our creator. Trying to feel his presence. He's given us a way to do that. Thank, praise be to God. But it's, it's not easy, is it? And I think that's why we're all here tonight. That's why we go to church. Because we come together. Because we want to feel connected to Him. Because we clamor and we desire so much to be with our God. To be with the one who created us. And the world clamors for Him. They don't really know it. They're, they're clamoring for something and, they, and they're reaching for something. But we who hear His voice know what that clamor is all about. But yet we still struggle to be connected to him. Satan's so good at what he does. He, he distracts us in many ways, keeps us down, tries to keep us from the joy and the love that God has for us. Friends, I want to remind you of who you are tonight. You, each one in here, is the ecclesia, the called out. You are the eclectos. That's Greek for the chosen ones. You are God's chosen people. Who he has so graciously imparted his love upon and called out to be the ones that carry his name, his holy name, to the world. That's a big responsibility. What a great honor. A great, great honor. <clears throat> You've been freed from the bondage of sin by the penalty, by the death of his son. You've been reconciled. You've been acquitted and restored from the guilt that all of our sins have brought upon us. We are free. We are free indeed. Amen? We are really, truly free. And we need Him, and we need His Holy Spirit to be in our lives each and every day. We can't be connected to one another or to Him the way that He wanted us to be or wants us to be without that. 1 Peter 1, 3-4 His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. For this reason, make every effort, every effort to add to your faith goodness 
and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive for the Lord our Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. If we rely on the power of God, on the power of Jesus Christ that he's intended for us, he's given his, us his divine power. If we rely on that, we will never stumble. That's pretty amazing. The hard part is staying connected, staying focused, <laughs> fighting the good fight, right? Cars are meant to be driven, <laughs> right? If you let your car sit in your driveway and you never start it, or you, let it, you start it every now and then, it gets rusty, battery dies, you go, to, you go out there to go somewhere, it's not going anywhere. Friends, you were built with a purpose. Just like the car you drove in here tonight. You were built with a purpose to be driven, to be engaged, to be speeding down the pathway that God has set purposely for your life. But I know the cargo in the trunk keeps the car from moving too fast sometimes, right? The fear. Fear is so crippling. So crippling. It keeps us from being and stretching out for what God wants us to do. Indecisiveness, guilt, outright defiance. We say, no, God, I'm good. Thank you. I don't need you. I'm connected here to me. I'm good. Destructive behavior, busyness, selfishness, greed, whatever it is, all those things keep us from being who God wants us to be. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Carrying your cross, sometimes in my mind, seems like, man, I've got to carry this burden here. I've just got to drag this thing through the streets. All this stuff I've got going on in my life, and that's not what it is at all. It's letting go. <laughs> it's Jesus carrying our burdens. It's Him carrying us, removing all the fear, all the doubt, all the guilt, all the thing, all the cargo in the trunk. It's taking all that away from us so that we can be free and be the people that He wants us to be and be purposeful as such. It's acknowledging Him in everything that we do, in our work, when we come home, when we're driving, thinking about Him, constantly focused on Him and conscious of what He wants in our lives, what He wants us to be doing. I was praying at the retreat, oh, God, what do you want me to be doing next? And an hour later, Luke came up and said, will you speak tonight? And here I am. He talks to us that way. He answers prayer. He really does. Yes, he does. And I think we don't believe that sometimes. We don't believe that he really will answer our prayer. And he does. And it's awesome. And it's not always as clear as that. I get it. But he does. We just have to be listening and willing to listen. He wants us to live, to die to live. He wants us to live if we just die to ourselves. Sounds strange. You want me to die so I can live. You want me to sacrifice and give up so I can have more. That's counterintuitive. We don't get that. But we have to trust that he knows what he's talking about. We have to trust him. We have to let go and do what he says. Does everybody have one of these? I forgot to ask us at the beginning. <laughs> ask everyone. If you don't have one of these, raise your hand. And one of these beautiful young children will give you one. Quickly. Yeah. 
Folks, what's keeping you from being the person that God wants you to be? What's keeping you... I want you to think about this and be honest with yourself. What's keeping you from doing what you know you should be doing? I think we all know in our hearts what we're supposed to be doing, how we're supposed to be living, something that we need to get rid of, something that we need to let go of. And my question and challenge to you tonight is, are you going to surrender? Are you going to surrender to him what you know is keeping you from him? Are you willing to step out in faith and let go of whatever that is? Because if you're not, this is all really just for nothing. He wants us to be connected to him. But to do that, we have to let go. And we have to be willing to do just that. So I want you to write on those red strips what it is that you need to let go of. Nobody has to see it. Nobody has to know. Fold it up. And we are going to come down and we are going to nail those things onto this cross right here tonight. And we are going to let go of what's keeping us from God. And what's keeping us from loving Him and being connected to Him. So that we can be the awesome people that God intended us to be. Jesus said, let go of your sin. Go and sin no more. Right? He said that many times. Go and sin no more. Be renewed in him. And let's have a full life. A full life. Jesus said, I've come so they may have life and have it to the full. Let's have a full life. Jesus. Please feel free to come down and nail these, nail those things on the cross as we listen to the song that's going to be playing.
all sing together, Lord, I need you. You can, you can stay where you are. So let's just continue this time of, of prayer. Lord, we need you. Lord, I come. I confess. Bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. So we sing, Lord, we need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need you Where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found, is where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. So Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. So teach my song to rise to you When temptation comes my way When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you Jesus, you're my hope and stay
my righteousness, O oh God, how I need you. God, we lay all these things at your feet and we ask that you make us, that you make us clean and that you make us one with you. We need you every single day. And God, it's so easy for us to, to fall and feel like we're not connected anymore. Um, God, so we ask you to be with us, not just now, but all the time. We, we seek you all the time. And God, even when we're weak, you're there to pick us up, God. And we just want to always be reaching out to you with our arms wide open. Because when we do that, we always find you with your arms wide open for us. You're the very first thing in our lives, and you'll be the very last thing in our lives. You're the very cornerstone upon which our lives are built. Jesus, we thank you. everyone to stand for this song. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Let's sing that again. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, the cornerstone, we made strong in the Savior's love. seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil oh my
When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I dare in him be found, trust in his righteousness alone, the stand before the throne. Christ alone. He's the Lord. 